It was the beginning of summer. I was working out of my apartment as a private investigator. The day started normally. I had a client coming in for a consultation. Most of the jobs that I had were either people doing coming in for background checks or seeing if their partner was cheating. With the lack of information I was given over the phone, I had no idea what this one would be. I need your help tracking someone down. Mr. Sullivan, I'm afraid I need more information than that. Who are you trying to track down? Well, before you agree to take the case, I can give you very little information. We can't have it getting out all willy-nilly. We? Who's we? Oh, me and my boss. I'm here representing him because he's too busy to come here himself. Your boss being? Mr. Alton, you might have heard the name before. I don't get involved in your sort of business. We need your help. Why me? Why not someone internal? The person we're looking for might be someone internal. I'm the only one Mr. Alton trusts right now. We decided together that you would be the best person for the job. I'm not taking this case to leave my office. There's an assassination attempt against Mr. Alton last night. You are going to help us solve it. I've never worked on an attempted murder case before. You haven't? <laughs> yes, I don't have the experience. You have, though. You can't lie to me. Last May. How did you... My case history isn't something public. Everyone has a portfolio, if you know where to look. <laughs> what? Of course, I have some incentives to convince you. I don't see what could. 5,000. An extra 30,000 on top, if you solve the case. On top of your hourly rate, of course. That would be enough money to, you know, pay off some debts. How do you think Mr. Alton will to hire someone without doing a background check? What do you take us for? I... I don't know. So, Mr. Doyle, will you take the case? I don't really have a choice, do I? Oh, well, everyone has free will, Mr. Doyle. It just so happens that every consequence has its... every action has its consequences. I'll take the case. Perfect! I'll call you soon so you can go over the crime scene and such. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Doyle. Goodbye, Mr. Sullivan. Once I had gone over the crime scene and did a thorough look at it, I had a little piece of evidence. A piece of fabric. And that was it. It was clear whoever attempted this had covered their tracks thoroughly. Mr. Sullivan set me up with a meeting with his boss, a Julius Alton, and he came to my office. Mr. Alton, it's nice to meet you. And yourself, Mr. Doyle. Bruce told me you had some questions. You can ask away. Yes, I do. Um, what happened that night? Well, it had been a long day of work. And as soon as I got home, I went to bed, and I woke up with someone strangling me. And... Did you run out of the room, or, did, like, what happened? Yes, that's right. I left the room and I ran into Bruce in the hall. So that's why you trust Bruce? Because he couldn't have been the one trying to strangle you if he was out in the hall? He's my right hand. Of course I trust him. <laughs> An alibi doesn't come from trust, Mr. Alton. Can you say 100% that it couldn't have been him? Yes. Can you describe the person you saw? Mr. Doyle, I was half asleep and trying not to die. It was hard to get any good look at them. <laughs> Alright, uh, do you know anyone who would want to kill you? That list is a long one. <laughs> well, I need it. Well, since they were able to get into my room, it had to have been someone close to me. We can't be sure of that. I need the list. I'll get it to you. Bruce gave me your contact information. He gave you mine as well, yes? Um, yes. Perfect. I hope you feel comfortable to contact me with anything you need. I will do. Um, can you walk me through what happened that night? 
Well, as I said, I was out for most of the day. As soon as I got home, I went to bed. And there was, was there anything off about the day prior? Anyone creeping around? No, not that I remember. And so nothing unusual about the house? Not particularly, no. I have one more question. Hmm? Have you ever seen this piece of fabric before? No, I don't think I have. Why? It was left at the crime scene. You haven't seen any fabric of the same color or anything like that? No, I don't think so. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Alton. That was all I needed. I'm sure I can stay a while longer. Here. You should have a drink with me. I'm your boss for the time being. You should get to know me. Do you not drink? I don't drink on the job. That makes sense. You need your senses about you to do detective work after all. Yeah. Hmm. Are you close with your family, Jay? Um, no. That's a shame. I'm close to my family. Those who are alive, anyway. And Yeah. Oh, that's right. I do need one thing from you. And what would that be? Wearing a suit by the next time we meet. I don't own a suit. That's fine. I'll have my seamstress sort one out for you. Our employees have a dress code, you see. I'd prefer if you followed along. You have a private seamstress? Oh, no. Eleanor isn't my employee. I just like her work the best. She'll be taking my measurements tomorrow. It'll be nice to catch up with her, too. I like to know those working for me, Jay. I don't work for you. You're my client. My point still stands. Anyway, I have to go now. Goodbye, Jay. Goodbye, Mr. Alton. Mr. Alton did send me a list of people he thinks want him dead. I looked over it a little bit, but no points of interest popped up. The next time I saw Mr. Alton, he wasn't alone. He had a seamstress, a Ms. Moncrief. They were there to get me a suit. It's lovely to see you again, Eleanor. Oh, hello, Mr. Alton. Eleanor, I've told you time and time again, please call me Julius. And I've told you I'm not doing that. Oh, good afternoon, Bruce. Good afternoon, Jay. Afternoon, Julius. Hmm. Eleanor, have you met my newest employee, Jay Doyle? I'm not your employee. Well... He's a freelancer, really. But, technically, he's my employee. Isn't that right, Jay? I suppose. It's nice to meet you, Ms. Moncrief. Likewise, Mr. Doyle. You have a few suits for him to try on, yes? Of course, I left them in the hall. I brought a few sizes and styles. Perfect. Mr. Doyle, was there a specific type of suit that you were hoping for? Oh, he wants a... Um, I was asking Mr. Doyle. But Julius is the one paying. Mr. Doyle, was there a specific type of suit that you were hoping for? Oh, um, well... I don't know much about suits, so... Whatever Mr. Alton chooses will be more than fine. <laughs> Let me see what you brought. Fine, then. So, any progress on the case? Not much. There's not that much evidence. Uh, but you'll solve it, though, right? I will. I have to. Julius, I don't understand why you keep hiring her. You, you've been hiring her for years, and there are so many seamstresses in the city. I like her work. But she doesn't like you enough to want to listen to you. She doesn't need to like me. Besides, she's been worse since that friend of hers died. She's just grieving. Then get a new seamstress? Hmm, I've been busy. I have been trying to get the person we hired to solve my attempted murder to trust me. Again, you've been hiring her for years, and... Why are you so concerned about getting Jay to trust you? I'm putting a lot of trust into him for this case. 
I don't like it being unbalanced. I don't have any control over him that way, you know? He's afraid of you. You have control over him through his fear. Fear will only get someone so far, but trust and loyalty will take someone to the end. He did take our side in the suit. I think that might have been because he genuinely didn't know much about the suits. He doesn't even own one. It's a start, though. I suppose, still, I don't like the idea of someone skulking about my house when they won't even call me by my first name. Mr. Doyle will be out in a moment. Oh! <clears throat> Here, allow me. Thank you, Mr. Alton. Of course, you clean up nice, Jay. Is that everything you need, Mr. Alton? Yes, thank you, Eleanor. Now, I didn't necessarily want to side with Mr. Alton about the suit, but I weighed my options. Ms. Moncrief was a seamstress. I thought there would be few repercussions for crossing her. Meanwhile, saying what Mr. Alton wanted me to say was Safer. Now, I was going over to Julius's to meet up with Mr. Sullivan. He was going to meet, introduce me to some of his members of the staff. Yet, when I arrived, I was met with Mr. Alton instead. Bruce is dealing with something, so I'll be here to introduce you to some key members of my staff. And I think it best for you not to be known as a private investigator during your time here. If they know why you're here, they'll know what you're playing at and therefore treat you differently. So you're saying I'm going in undercover? Yes, exactly. Exciting, isn't it? I wouldn't necessarily call it exciting, but if it's what you think this case calls for, I can do it. I assume I'll be taking on the role of just some miscellaneous employee? Yes, that's exactly what you'll be. My employee. So I'll be what I am not. You'll be what you basically are. <laughs> Fine, Mr. Alton, I'll be what I basically am. Oh, and one more thing. All of my employees call me by my first name, and since you are pretending to be my employee, I expect you to act the part. I find it incredibly unprofessional to do so. I think that you will find Julius, oh. you asked to see me. Oh, of course. <clears throat> Lucy, meet Jay Doyle. He's my new employee. Nice to meet you, Jay. I'm Lucy Edwards. It's nice yeah. to meet you, Ms. Edwards. Please, call me Lucy. <laughs> I find it unprofessional to do so. You won't get far here with that attitude. That's what I've been telling him. This is a professional environment. I don't see why I shouldn't act Professional. Uh, excuse me, Julius, can you come help me with something? Of course. Jay and Lucy, just a moment, please. Now, where on earth do you come from? Uh, how do you mean? Well, you obviously haven't been working for Julius for long. Otherwise, I've at least seen a few before. What is your relationship with him? Mr. Alton is my employer. And that's all? Yes? Hello? No, it's not a good time. I'm at Julius's. We can't all find a way out. Please, Jonathan, you're lucky. Yes, he's charming, but that doesn't outweigh his problems. Julius is a jackass. I'll never see why you like him. Whatever, I'll see you soon. Now, Eleanor was suspicious. She obviously did not like Mr. Alton. So, I decided to trail her. 
from Mr. Sullivan, I got her favorite coffee shop. And just as I was about to trail her, I got a call from Mr. Alt. He was taking me with him to meet his arms dealer, a Daisy Fay. He picked me up and took me to the warehouse. Well, there you are, Julius. I was starting to get the impression that you just weren't going to show up. That was one time, Daisy. Still, I... Oh, you brought a private investigator? <laughs> Jane, Jane Doyle, right? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> and you're Daisy Faye? That'd be me. I mean, I suppose it makes sense hiring a private investigator after an account of We tried to keep that private. I mean, everything has a way of being out. So I'm a suspect then? Well, everyone is a suspect until someone is guilty. No, of course. How can I think anything different? Are you here to interrogate me? No. We're just here to get the stuff and then leave. Okay, that's good enough. So, you give me the money and I'll give you the goods. I trust you will find it in your best interest to keep the stuff about Jay being a private investigator to yourself. I will, but I have to warn you, there's no way I can be the only one who knows. Of course. Thank you, Daisy. Jay, will you pick that up, please? It is not your job to say whether or not you interrogate someone. I could have easily done so. We have other things to do. I had other things to do, yet here I am. Like what? Like trailing a suspect? Do you have a suspect? It's not much, but yes. Jay, you should have told me. Who is it? Ms. Edwards. Lucy? She doesn't like you. I've known Lucy for most of my life. I think I would know if she didn't like me. I heard her on a phone call. She called you a jackass. And that's your lead? It's as much of a lead as I have. All right, we can follow your lead. We? Yes, it's been a while since I've been on a field mission. Don't you have other things to do? Hmm. I think trying to find out who tried to kill me is pretty important, don't you think? You hired me for that. And there's nothing in your contract that says I can't go with you. <laughs> Fine. If we're doing this, we're doing it by my rules. Take that, wherever you're taking it, and change it to something more casual. You get a coffee shop on Sterling in half an hour. So I met Julie's across the street from the coffee place and we staked the place up. We watched Lucy as she entered through the windows and watched her leave as she went into an alley. Lucky for us, we were still able to get a good view of her. Yeah, any idea who? Hmm, could be several people, really. She handles a lot of stuff without consulting me till it's over. Because you trust her? Yeah, because I trust her. Why are you so excited? Hmm, it's been a while since I've been on a field mission, as I said before. I've missed them. You're the boss. Can't you just decide to go on a field mission like you did to me? In this business, there are rules, even if they aren't spoken. The boss doing the grunt work, well, is how things are done. Wow, you're the boss of a... Uh, an organization, and you still complain about your job. Must mean there's no hope for the rest of us, huh? Do you not like your job? I do, sometimes. <laughs> but I mostly do it because I'm good at it. You are good at it, aren't you? There hasn't been much proof of that in this case. I hired you for a reason. I'll do it. I'll just wait. Someone's coming. You're late. This wasn't the most important thing on my schedule. You're the only one who wanted to meet. I can leave if you're too busy. Sorry, sorry. That was rude. I'm just having a really busy day. You know, if Julius catches me, I'm in trouble. You've done worse. He doesn't know that. He'd be mad with meeting with you in general. Yeah, yeah, he's just butthurt. You got favors? You 
could have just grabbed him yourself when you left. I wasn't thinking clearly then. Well, you shouldn't have gotten involved with Julius like that. You know he's charming. Yes, he's got something to him. Anyway, anything new happen? Well, Julius has this new employee, Jay Doyle. Came out of nowhere, but had access to the house. Most people, people uh, who have access to us have been in business for years. So he hasn't been around a while? If that was the case, I would have at least seen of him before. Do you think of Jay Doyle? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Well, if you find anything else on him, just tell me. Do you think he's... No, he seems too concerned with professionalism. Good to know. As I said, I'm having a busy day. I'm going to get going. See you soon. Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. Who was that? Oh, it's no one important. It's not up to you to decide who's important or not. Was that... Jonathan? Where have you heard that name before? That's who Lucy was on the phone with. You know what? Just ignore today, all right? I cannot just ignore. I'm the one paying you. Jonathan, Julius. <sighs> I have hit a roadblock in the case. Continuing to turn Lucy had to give me any more information. Julius still refused to give me anything more on that man who is presumably Jonathan. He did, however, look through his files to see what went missing. He said nothing important was missing and refused to elaborate when I asked what was. I decided to calm down and get a drink run by, at a bar run by a friend. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Jay, how have you been? Hey, Quincy. I've been busy. I've been well, you know. I've heard some rumors about a job boss bringing in a new employee who seems to be working with him closely out of nowhere. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? I gotta do what I gotta do. I worry about you. Hey, look. I may have hit a roadblock in the case, but once I figure it out, which I will, I have to. I'm out of there. Maybe I could help. I hear a lot of things working at this bar. So, you would know if someone had a motive to kill Julius Alton? <laughs> I know a few. I mean, the most obvious suspect in any case would be like the left. Oh, uh, we're in a small world. Hello again. How's your search going? Hello, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I can give you the proceedings of the case. Right, right, because I'm a suspect? Exactly. However, could I ask you some questions? Um, sure, I've got time. Where were you that night? What night? June 3rd. Overseas. France, if you want to get specific. Do you have any proof of that? My passport was stamped. I think it's on me. Very well. Um, one last question. Do you recognize this piece of fabric? No, I don't. Thank you. That was all I have. Daisy, a long time no see. Oh my goodness, Jonathan Kelly. I thought I'd seen the last of you. No, nope, I'm still kicking. Who's this? I'm Jay Doyle. You frequent this pub, don't you? I do. Why? Hey, you seem familiar, but that's all. You might have heard his name around. He's working for you. Julius. Are you? I am. Do you know him? Jonathan and Julius dated. It didn't really end that well. It certainly was not a clean break. I'm sorry to hear that. How long ago was the break? Um, a few months ago. If you don't mind me asking, why did you two break up? Um, it, it, it's personal. I'm sorry for the intrusion. It's okay. I need to do that. Wish you the best. Wish you the best as well. Yeah, you're working with Goodbye, Daisy. Bye, Jonathan. I don't I don't 
think Jonathan, I mean, he's a sweet guy and all, but just kind of heartbroken right now. I'm sorry, Miss Faye. I cannot rule anyone out, and I certainly cannot trust you. Well, I wish you luck tomorrow. Goodbye, Miss Faye. Just call me. So you not getting fried with this one. All of the evidence I have is this piece of fabric. <laughs> Let me take a look at it. I see that. This is nice material. I thought so as well. I don't think I've seen anything matching it. Thanks anyway. <laughs> it's getting late. I have to go. It's nice to see you though. Nice to see you too. You should come around more often. I'll try. Now, I knew for sure that that man in the alley was Jonathan. Jonathan Kelly. And I had a story for him. He was Julius's ex. I decided on a particularly hot day to start back at square one. So I went back to Julius's to look over the crime scene again. So, you haven't been in the room since the incident? No, I've been sleeping elsewhere. Didn't want to mess with anything until the case was solved. That works out perfectly for me. I'm here to do a second sleep of it. Oh! Uh, Julius Elmore's here for a new suit. Oh, perfect. Bring her in. Lovely to see you as always, Elmore. Hello, Mr. Alton. Here, put this on to make sure everything fits right. So, Mr. Doyle, how is your case coming along? Excuse me? There was an attempt on Mr. Alton's life, correct? When Bruce told me you were freelance, I assumed you were a private investigator and hired to solve the case. How, how did you hear about this? Well, Mr. Alton told me himself when I was taking measurements for his suit. How is the case coming along? I'm sorry. Ms. Moncrief, I don't think that's any of your business. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Doyle. I was just curious. When my best friend died, her case was never officially solved. I'm, I'm so sorry. I know who did it, though. Uh, do you need anything? I need to get to work. Uh, good luck. I need it. It's so hot in here. You would think that Mr. Alton would be able to keep this place more air-conditioned than my car. Oh, here, let me take that for you. I'll put it in the coat closet. Why, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Of course, just be sure to pick it up before you leave. I think it fits fine. Of course it does. I know what I'm doing. Hmm. Well, you are the one that asked me to try it on to make sure everything fit. But did you ever have any doubt that it would? No, of course not. Then you should have just sent me away, instead of keeping me here. It's too hot to just be standing around. Well, it's my house, and I can keep the temperature how I like. Besides, no one's complained about it yet. Maybe no one wants to stand up to you. I hardly think complaining about the heat counts as standing up to me. You don't know anything! Uh, did Eleanor just leave? Yes, she just stormed out. She seemed upset and blamed the heat. She forgot her blazer. I just put it in the coat closet. Oh, go grab it. You might be able to catch her on her way out. Oh, have you had any new developments on the case? Nope. You are going to solve it, though, aren't you? I will. I have to. Wait a second. This is, that's the fabric from the crime scene. And it, it's the same fabric as, what is this? Eleanor's blazer. We have our almost killer. 
That means we could finally do something about it. Julius, I can send some men to her house to deal with her right now. No, we're going now. I, I really don't. I want to be there when the person who tried to kill me gets what she deserves. And I have worked far too long and hard on this case to not see it through. Jay, you're experienced in all this, and Julius, she tried to kill you. She could try again. I don't care. We're going now. Ever heard of knocking? You tried to kill me! What? You strangled me in my sleep! Someone tried to kill you? You said you knew that. You told me that Mr. Alton had told you himself. This fabric left at the crime scene matches perfectly to the fabric in your blazer. So you are good at your job. He hired me for a reason. He says that to everyone. <laughs> because I don't blindly hire people. But you blindly kill people. We don't kill anyone blindly. You killed my best friend. <laughs> I don't get to do field missions very often anymore. You gave the orders, and someone has to take blame. I'm sick and tired of waiting for justice that's not coming unless I do it myself! Bruce, you were right. I really shouldn't have come here. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have. What do I do? What can I do? I don't... Just go home, Jay. Go home. I will handle it. Your, your money will be sent to you as soon as possible. Just go, Jay. Just leave. <coughs> that was the case of Julius Alton. <laughs> he died. <laughs> so did Eleanor, though. I paid off my debts, and working as a private investigator, I got pretty used to seeing blood. But after seeing two people get stabbed, and though I wasn't there to see it, die, it changed my sensitivities. I quit my job, moved back in with my parents, and have been looking for other jobs since. I haven't found anything, but I will. <laughs>